So Ron, tell us about the um, opportunities for search of television programming, um, you know, through an IP interface and what you guys are doing. Yeah, so uh, if you think about sort of multi-device television viewing, first you have to figure out how to get to the material. And so on the television, you've got a remote control that you go, go through the networks and, and you can sort of see what, what's playing. But in a VOD world, you have some other search mechanism. So all the programmers provide metadata associated with their various programs uh, that they view online or in, in any other device, even television, uh, large VOD libraries. So we actually aggregate a lot of that uh, material so that a consumer can, can, view, can find the material what, wherever it's hosted and then ultimately view it. Um, but it's, it's a, a vast uh, library of, of metadata associated with every episode of every television show. So is that metadata provided by the producers, or how do you get all that? In no, it's, it's typically provided by the, uh, by the owners uh, or, or the distributors of the content, in the case of cable networks. It might also be provided by, by content providers. The rights profile associated with all this programming is very complicated, and, and so you have different kinds of permutations. It's one of the reasons I think it'll take a little while yet for this sort of TV everywhere to explode, uh, you know, online. So just uh, tell us again about uh, a little bit more about the search and sort of the indexing search. Where does that show up now and where might it be, uh, you know, rolling out? Well, so the, you know, t two versions, two flavors. First of all, the, the material that's basically available on the web for free, and that can be spidered and, and a number of search engines will, will bring that up, Google, others, Clicker. But uh, for the material that's behind a, a, a walled garden, you would, um, you'd have to have a direct relationship with the provider of the content in order to be able to search it. So we've, we, we do that. We have a relationship through, the, um, through our customers, cable companies and telcos, and through the content providers, the cable networks generally, to, uh, to, to get, gather that data so that we can then inform consumers about where they might be able to watch or when they could watch uh, you know any given materials where where is the sort of um, the search reside or where where will it reside well let's, let's talk generally a little okay. bit about the TV everywhere ecosystem so TV everywhere is the concept that because you've got a subscription relationship with a cable provider or a satellite provider or somebody else for your basic television in your house that you can then take that television and view it on other devices um, and so the question is how, it begs the question of sort of how do you do that? And so you need some way, one, to search the material so you can find it on the web, and then to be able to view it. And, and in viewing it, the system needs to know whether or not you have the rights to view, uh, whether or not you're a subscriber of HBO or of Epix or of Stars or, or Showtime or Disney Channel or, or whatever it is you're a subscriber of or a consumer is a subscriber of uh, on the television. So there's some technology involved in, in actually authenticating that. And then so the search is combined with a rights profile that actually uh, livens the connection between the consumer and their material on multiple devices. Um, and so that, that's really the basic TV Everywhere ecosystem. So the metadata that is used for searching that material is provided by the content providers. And, and then it, it's available to be searched um, and that for consumers, they would likely go to the portal of their cable provider or their television provider, Dish, Dish Online or DirecTV or e AT&T UVerse or Charter.net, uh, in the case of Charter Communications or others. And so, the, um, so at that point, uh, it, there's a search facility at those portals for consumers to use. And it, it begs the question, well, how, how are consumers going to know to go there? And I think that's going to happen in time. Right now, you're, we're seeing a lot of commercials about uh, HBO advertising the availability of HBO Go, and we're in the middle of, of authenticate, authenticating for, uh, for the visits to HBO Go directly. Um, and consumers will come to know that they can go to one place to search all of their material from all of the networks, and that would be the portals of, or home pages provided by their television provider online. So where will TV Everywhere go? Will it be a function of the MSOs and the satellite providers, or will it be the publishers themselves, like the HBOs, that want to go directly? Uh, where, where, where do you think this is going to be well, in the next year? Yeah, let's just talk about it. I mean, uh, time frame aside, um, so 
we have, uh, there, there are a number of embedded interests. I mean, right now, uh, cable, cable networks profit tremendously from the fees they receive from, from uh, cable companies and from uh, the programmers from cable companies and from satellite providers. So that maintaining that ecosystem is good for everybody. Um, and so how do you maintain that ecosystem? So I, I believe more of the programmers will provide more content online but require that the viewing or consumption of that content is enabled as a result of a subscription relationship with a cable company or a telco or a, or a satellite provider. The question is not whether they're going to watch TV online, it's how they do it and where the, what, what the economic incentives are to, to do it and where will they do it. And my view is that the current distributors of television are going to be able to distribute that material online and it's going to be cost effective for consumers to go to their portals or to the programmer sites and consume that material for free, no extra charge, with their embedded subscription. It's going to take a little while for the business rules to evolve to make it easy to present all of television online. And I think this ecosystem is still going to take two or three years to figure out. Sports, live sports, Major League Baseball in Major League Baseball Advanced Media, a division of Major League Baseball, has the rights for online uh, live games. So in the television packages where they sell television rights, the online distribution rights don't go with the television rights. So it may be that baseball or other sports are bundled, packaged with other online services to enhance the, to make for a richer uh, package for consumers to, to purchase for, for online products. So when you think about all of the different players and the rights profiles and the complexity associated with it and the production cycles, I think it's going to take a few years yet for this stuff to really get to where the consumer has, a, where there's a critical mass online for the consumer to enjoy what they commonly enjoy as television on multiple devices. But of course, uh, it's mostly on demand at this point, or it's not as much live programming. The live programming might come later, or what do you think? Well, I mean, the, the, again, rights profile. So as you've seen, the Time Warner app is a lot as live uh, streams, live television streams into the household, and so they've used certain of the clauses of their contract to uh, create a, 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 an in-home experience. The out-of-home experience isn't available yet. I mean, we had we saw Mobi TV do some uh, broadcast uh, streaming uh, to portable devices. Um, I think those experiences are still going to evolve. What's next for you guys? Tell us about the company, a little bit about you know where things are, where it might be going this year. Yeah, well, Cinecore, we have we 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 currently do the portals for about 45 cable companies and telcos. Uh, also, and and we are about 250 people based in Buffalo, and I think it's an incredibly rich environment. We're really right in the middle of this TV Everywhere ecosystem, uh, working with the distributors on the one hand and the programmers on the other hand to make sure that it works smoothly and simply for consumers. And so, uh, you know, our effort is, is more, more of that and launching more consumer experiences in the TV area uh, that we think are going to, will dramatically enhance the enjoyment of, of, uh, of TV Everywhere for consumers uh, widely.